I ran into my online lover. Turns out, she's my sister. I stood behind the door, watching my sister sitting at the appointed place in a white dress. I felt like the world was crashing down. Before she noticed me, I took out my phone and sent her a line in a panic. We're not suitable. Let's break up. The young lady from the Sioux family didn't expect her first love to end like this. She was crushed and couldn't understand why she was suddenly broken up with. She cried at home for several days. I couldn't bear to see it and tried to comfort her impatiently. Isn't it just a breakup? Can't you cheer up a bit? During the conversation, she accidentally touched the voice call with her online lover. The next second, my phone in my pocket was ringing so loud it was deafening. My sister slowly looked up. Silence is tonight's Cambridge. I used a WeChat fake account to flirt. She had a sunny and cheerful personality. Except I hadn't seen her face yet. Everything else about her was dancing wildly on my point of aesthetic. We agreed to meet in person tomorrow for the meeting. I was a bit nervous. Standing in front of the wardrobe choosing a suit, I still hadn't decided which one to pick. Ding dong. My phone suddenly ran. It was a message from my online lover. Miss Rabbit. Carrot Baby. We're meeting tomorrow. I'm so excited. Her nickname was Miss Rabbit, so I named myself Mr. Carrot. I cheerfully laid on the bed, holding my phone. Then she sent me three more messages. I really can't wait to meet you. Are you looking forward to it? Are you? They must be eager to see me too, right? Through the screen, I could feel her excitement and chatter. Of course, I look forward to meeting her. This is my first love and we've been dating online for over a year now, I have deep feelings for her. However, seeing her so cute, I suddenly had a wicked idea of playing a trick on her and seeing her reaction. Mr. Carrot, well till the not that much expectation. After I sent out this message, it was quiet on the other end for a long time. I don't know what she's up to. I panicked, thinking that she must be angry. I quickly opened the input box, ready to explain. Ding dong. She suddenly sent a picture. It was a picture without a face. In the photo, she was wearing a black bodysuit. Her figure was slender and long, and the most eye-catching were her long and fair legs. Looking at the phone screen, I was speechless. I thought she was a delicate and cute girl, but I didn't expect her to be. She really is too beautiful, her baby. How about now, looking forward to seeing me? My heart was racing. I'm looking forward. I was grinning at the photo. When my mom suddenly called, she said she cooked supper, asking me and my sister to come down to the dining room. I have a half-sister, Anna, who is three years older than me. Four years ago, my mom married her dad, reconstituting our family. I moved into the Sioux family with my mom. Uncle Sue is a financial tycoon in City C. He's very wealthy. He's warm man down to earth. He and my mom are deeply in love, and he treats me like his own son, Anna. Being the heir to the Sioux family, has been living abroad dealing with the family business, I rarely see her. The few times we met, our interactions were cordial and polite, with a hint of estrangement. A few days ago, she suddenly returned home, saying she was coming back to meet a very important person. During her time in China, she has been living at home. Uncle Sue and my mom were both very happy about Anna coming home especially my mom, who spent all day in the kitchen cooking delicious food, feeding Anna, and proclaiming that since she rarely came home, they had to make her feel the warmth of a family. I knocked on Anna's door and politely asked, Sis, are you asleep? A cold voice came from behind the door. Not yet. What's up, brother? Mom asked us to eat the supper she cooked. Okay, I'll be right there. When Nana arrived, I had already finished two bowls of chicken soup and just belched, I have to say. My mom's cooking skills are quite impressive. When I once again reached out my greedy hand toward that pot of chicken soup, my mom was quick to react and slapped my hand. George, how much have you eaten already? Your sister hasn't had any yet. Anna, dressed in a black dress with a slim figure, sat opposite me and politely said, if my brother likes the soup, he can have more. Seeing her polite and considerate manner, my mother's love overflowed, and she quickly served Anna a bowl full of chicken. Anna looked at the bowl full of chicken, not knowing where to start. I hinted with my eyes, Sis, if you can't eat it, you can give me some. But she ignored me. Well, I knew that her politeness was just pretense. Uncle Sue looked at Anna, some curious and a bit gossiping. Anna, I heard you came back this time to meet a very important person. 
At these words, Anna suddenly stopped her soup drinking motion, not knowing who she was thinking about, but her face flushed instantaneously. She replied, Yes. Then she buried her head and guzzled down the soup, trying to use the soup bowl to hide her rapidly reddening face. But she didn't realize the bowl couldn't hide it at all. Even the neck was red. She was shy. My god. I was so shocked by the scene before my eyes that my jaw almost dropped. Though I haven't spent much time with Anne over the years, I can clearly notice that she is a cold-hearted person. Maybe because she took over the company, a very young age Anne has been temper in the unpredictable world of business for many years. She tends to be more calm and seasoned than her peers. She always maintains an unperturbed demeanor. So, let alone being shy, I had hardly ever seen her show emotions before. But, now, she was so embarrassed because of this important person that her face turned red, which was unprecedented. An instinct tells me I'm about to have a brother-in-law. Seeing Nana's reaction, Uncle Su and my mom looked at each other and laughed, understanding what was going on. It seems you have a situation. She didn't respond, just kept her head down drinking soup, her face redder than a lantern. Uncle Su and my mom were always worried that Anna would end up alone. She had good looks and a high level of education, plus she was a goddess, but she was too cold. From childhood to adulthood, she always had a cold attitude towards Bo's who wanted to get close to her, pushing them thousands of miles away. They were worried that Anna's cold nature would not attract Bo's, or that she didn't like Bo's. To their surprise, she secretly started dating, which surprised them very much seeing everyone's attention was on Anna. I hatched a plan to snag a big chicken leg. Congratulations, sis. When are you going to bring your boyfriend home for dinner? As I teased Anna, I reached out my chopsticks towards the pot of chicken soup dot dot and quite naturally, without anyone noticing, I placed the long-coveted chicken leg into my bowl. I had just taken a bite of the big chicken leg. My mom said, eat, eat, eat. That's all you know. Can't you learn from your sister and bring me a daughter-in-law someday? I didn't respond, chewing in my mouth fan muttering in my heart. How do you know I'm not dating? I just haven't met her in person yet. The relationship hasn't stabilized, so I haven't said anything. Humph. Once we meet, I'll bring her home and give you a big surprise. Today is the day I'm going to meet my online date, sitting in the car. I took a photo with a bouquet of cherry blossoms and sent it to her. I'm almost there. Look, I even brought your favorite cherries. The photo didn't show my face because we agreed not to show our faces before meeting in person. So that it would be a surprise when we meet, the frame only captured a corner of my beige suit and the beautiful and tempting cherry blossom bouquet. As soon as I sent the message, she replied, Thank you. Baby, I love cherries so much. Mua, I'm already here, waiting for you. The meeting place was chosen by her. Jinjiang International Restaurant, the most luxurious restaurant in City C. A meal costs well into the six figures, a favorite place for many upscale banquets. Following the guideline, I went up to the sixth floor, which she had reserved completely. In front of the spacious and bright floor two ceiling window, a girl was quietly sitting on the couch. She was wearing a pure white dress, long and slender. The sun poured through the window and cast a warm halo on her. Her soft and delicate silhouette was a bit mesmerizing. Just by looking at her silhouette, I could feel how beautiful she was. I held the bouquet, standing by the door. My heart was pounding nonstop. Taking a deep breath, I was just about to walk towards her when I saw her turn around. Caught off guard, she revealed her face. A face, exactly like Anna's, like I had seen a ghost. I quickly pulled my head back behind the door. This is a disaster. I'm cyber dating my own sister. Is this some kind of surreal plot? I could never imagine that the sweet girl who loves to act cute on the phone and the con and cool Anna are the same person. Suddenly I remember that she said she came back to the country this time to meet an important person. I was thinking at the time that I was going to have a brother-in-law. Now it seems the brother-in-law turned out to be me. My mind went blank. Just then, my phone in my pocket vibrated suddenly. I received a message she had just sent. Baby, are you here? I thought I heard a nose at the door. Looking at the message on my phone, my feelings were all mixed up. After hesitating for a while, I fearfully, tremblingly typed out a line of text. We're not right for each other. Let's break up. As soon as the message was sent, Anna, who had been sitting eagerly on the couch, suddenly stood up. 
She stared in shock at the sudden breakup text on her phone, as if she couldn't believe what she was seeing. After a long pause, she nervously tapped on the screen and sent me countless messages, Are you joking baby? Woo woo. I don't think this joke is funny at all. Can we not say things like this in the future? Baby, reply to me. Why aren't you talking? My mind was a blank slate. The current situation was too chaotic. I really didn't know what to say. Seeing that I didn't respond to the messages, Anna was near collapse, her typing hands trembling. Do you really want to break up? Did I do something wrong to upset you? Tell me, I'll change immediately. Can we not break up? I don't want to break up. I don't care. Anyway, I don't agree to break up. Where are you now? I looked at the incessant popping up messages in the chat box. Not knowing what to do, I decided to leave here first. In case I was seen by Anna and had to explain. I quietly turned around, ready to leave. Just at this moment, the ringtone of the phone in my pocket suddenly rang. It gave me a start. It was a call from Anna. She was anxious when I didn't reply to her messages for a long time, so she made a voice call directly. In the quiet hall, my cell phone ringtone was particularly clear. It immediately gave away my position. I was so nervous that I quickly hung up the phone, put on my hat, turned around and ran. Anna seemed to have noticed something and immediately ran towards me at full speed. Mr. Carrot, is that you? Oh my god, why are you calling me by my online name? It's really embarrassing to be called by an online name in real life. In the long corridor, I was running ahead with my hat on and my face covered. She was chasing me with her long legs. I was totally at a loss. Sister, I beg you to stop chasing. I don't even dare to think, if you catch up and realize that the baby you've been calling every day is me, it would be so awkward. I seriously suspect that Anna had practiced speed walking, otherwise how could her one step be equivalent to my five? Just as she was about to catch up, a lifesaver appeared. A waiter pushing a cart suddenly showed up around the corner, blocked Anna's way. The waiter appeared very suddenly, and Anna didn't stop in time when she saw her. Uncontrollably ran into the cart. Clink! In an instant, the expensive desserts in the cart fell on the ground along with Anna. The cream on the desserts shattered and hit the carpet, and some got stuck on her dress. The usually cold and noble Anna now seemed somewhat embarrassed. But she didn't care about all that. She immediately got up and wanted to continue chasing, but was held tightly by the waiter. You hit something and want to run. Pay up. Taking advantage of her being held back, I slipped into the elevator. Inside the elevator, I just sunk down onto the floor. I had never tried so hard even during the physical education test for one kilometer. Ah, uh, how could my cyber girlfriend be Anna? It could have been anyone else. Why did it have to be her? The much anticipated meeting in person turned into a large scale embarrassing scene. It really is true. The thrill of online dating is fleeting. And the face-to-face -face meeting is like a funeral when leaving the hotel. Considering the huge bouquet of cherry blossoms was too heavy and inconvenient to carry, and I couldn't bring it home. I simply left it on the bench outside the hotel. When I got home, it was already dark, and Anna hadn't returned yet. She was probably still out looking for me. The phone kept ringing incessantly, with 99 plus messages, all from Anna. Baby, why did you run? What happened? Why break up all of a sudden? Is there something I did wrong? I can change. Say something. Anyway, I don't agree to break up. I'd rather die than break up. Where are you now? Are you okay? After thinking about it, I decided not to let her know the truth about the breakup. After all, we are step-siblings living under the same roof and we see each other often. If the truth comes out, it would be awkward every time we meet. The phone kept bringing up messages. Why break up? say something. Even through the screen, I could feel her anxiety. I took a deep breath, coldly tapped on the screen of my phone, and made up a reason. Because I'm face conscious, and your face is not my type. Nonsense. Her face is so beautiful that it is envied by everyone. Completely in line with my aesthetic tastes, she replied instantly. Baby, you finally replied to me. What kind of face do you like? I can change. I was surprised. How can you change your face? She responded quickly. I can have plastic surgery to look like what you like. I was so shocked that I almost dropped my phone. Anna, are you out of your mind? You're lovesick to the point that even zombies would spit you out. Me? No plastic surgery. Her. Then what should I do? I typed harshly. I don't like you. When I say breakup, it is a breakup. 
don't message me anymore. And if you say another word, I'll blacklist you. She didn't message anymore. The phone finally quieted down. Back in my room, I went to my desk, picked up the ceramic rabbit that had been sitting on my desk for a long time, and stared at it for a while. It's a pink little rabbit, tightly holding a big carrot. In a possessive manner, it was made by Anna and sent to me. When we were in love for a month, she said to me then, Baby, I am this little rabbit, and you, you are my carrot. It's a cheesy lie, but I liked it, since the day I got it. I cherished it and placed it on the table in my room, but from today onward, I sigh. I couldn't bear to throw it away, so I hid it in the cabinet. Anna, after the breakup, was devastatingly down. She worked like crazy at the company during the day and drank like mad at the bar at night, trying to numb herself with work and alcohol. Her condition only got worse day by day. My mom and uncle Sue watch, worried dot dot originally. When Anna started dating, the two of them were happy, thinking that this girl had finally come to her senses, but they did not expect her path of love to be so torturous and exhausting. She finally started dating and almost lost half of her life in the process. The two of them took turns to persuade Anna with heartfelt words, and they were almost out of words, but she still looked lost and indifferent. My mom kept saying, that guy really, he was still good with your sister before they met, but when it was time to meet him, he just found an excuse to dump her. He's so fickle. In your young people's words, is this called called is it jerk? Truth be told, that jerk is right in front of you, my mom. We can't persuade him. George, you go. Go and talk to your sister. Ah, and me, I pointed to myself. Yeah, it's easier to communicate among you young people. You go and talk to her. Uncle Sue chimed in. When I came to the door of Ana's room, I saw through the half-open door that she was sitting by the window. Her shoulders were trembling slightly, and from time to time, there was the sound of sobbing. Just looking at her back, you could feel her overwhelming sadness. She was crying so intently that she couldn't even hear me knock on the door. So I had to go directly to her side. When I got close, I found that she was holding a bunch of flowers in her arms. It was the bouquet of cherries that I was originally going to give her, but ended up leaving on the bench at the hotel entrance. That hotel is near the sea and often has birds coming to the shore to find food. At that time, I thought, since it's not convenient to take this bunch of cherries home and it's a pity to throw away, why not just leave it here to feed the birds? I didn't expect that Anna would bring it back. A few of the cherries already have bite marks. Is it tasty? I opened my mouth suddenly. She shuddered and suddenly looked up, apparently only now realizing my presence. When did you get here? Then she quickly wiped away the tears at the corners of her eyes, trying to hide her usual cool and calm demeanor. Just now, I found a chair and sat next to her. My gaze fell on the bright red cherries, and I spoke again. Are these sweet? I haven't tasted them yet, but they should be sweet, right? After all, I've watered that tree so many times and fertilized it for so long. That was when I was dating Anna online. She said she liked cherries, so I claimed a cherry tree in a fruit orchard in the nearby suburbs. I wanted her to taste the cherries I grew myself. Just before the meetup, a batch of them had just ripened, so I made a bouquet out of the fruits to give to her. I haven't tasted them yet, so I don't know what the fruits that this newbie fruit farmer of mine taste like. Seeing that I kept looking at the cherries, Anna seemed puzzled and held the things in her arms more tightly. I haven't tasted them yet. That they should be sweet, she said. She brought them back a few days ago and hasn't tasted them yet. Isn't this what you ate? I pointed to the cherries that had been bitten. She looked down at those fruits, her expression clearly disgruntled, her voice containing some jealousy. That's what the birds ate. Really? Are you even jealous of birds? Double quotes dot then why don't you eat? If you don't eat it soon, it'll go bad. I can't bear to. Her expression was melancholic. This is the last thing he left for me. If I eat one, there'll be one less. What's the last thing? It sounds strange, but when said by Anna who has been dumped, it seems somewhat reasonable. Looking at the bright red fruits, I swallowed and tentatively asked, Can I? Can I taste one? No. Without hesitation, she rejected me, hugging the bouquet tightly in her arms, protectively. I can't bring myself to eat them. All right, okay. So after all the hard work I put into growing these fruits, in the end, I didn't eat them. You can't bring yourself to eat them. Only the birds ate them. I looked down and saw seven or eight bottles of wine on the floor, several of which had already been emptied. Ana's phone was on the table, 
The screen was on. The phone screen was showing her chat records with Carrot. These days, she's always been going over their past chat records, over and over again, trapping herself in memories she won't let go of, completely restricting herself, locking herself in a prison she made, just like me. She took a bottle of wine, poured herself a glass, and was about to start drinking again. Just as the wine touched her lips, I stopped her. Stop drinking. How much have you been drinking these past days? Stop drinking and stop looking at these things. I held her hand that was holding the wine glass, a bit agitated. Not sure if I was persuading her or myself. It's just a breakup. Can't you pick yourself up a bit? Can't you let go of yourself? Anna smelled faintly of alcohol, and her peach blossom eyes were misty. She stared at me, a bit puzzled by my reaction. She knew I was here to persuade her, but she didn't expect me to get so agitated. After all, as step-siblings, our relationship has always been polite and courteous, even somewhat indifferent. I really shouldn't get so emotional about her business. My hand was still tightly gripping her wrist. She glanced down, her expression disgruntled. Then, with a jerk, she threw off my hand, let go. At the same time, she threw all the wine in her glass. The wine happened to land on her lit phone screen, automatically triggering a voice call to Mr. Carrot. Seeing the phone screen, Anna was anxious, fussing to end the call, because Mr. Carrot had told her that if she sent him one more message, he would block her. So, ever since they broke up, even if she missed him to insanity, she didn't dare to send a single message. She didn't expect that now the voice call was accidentally triggered by the wine. Anna was very anxious, I was even more anxious, because my WeChat is currently logged into Mr. Carrot's burner account, and my phone is not on silent, Sure enough, the next second, my phone rang in my pocket as expected. In the quiet room, the phone ring was deafening. Anna suddenly stopped her hand that was about to hang up the call. She slowly looked at me, just as she had dialed the call on her aunt. My phone rang on my aunt. This was difficult not to raise doubts. I was dying of anxiety and my mind was racing. It's just a friend call, I lied. I quietly pressed reject call but pretended to answer it and started acting with all my might. Hello, bro. What's up? Huh? You broke up. What's wrong with your girlfriend? I told you before that she had problems and you didn't believe me. Now you know. Don't cry. Don't cry. I'll be right there with you. I once had a friend crying over the phone about his ex-girlfriend in the middle of the night and now that has become my acting material. I told you before that she had problems and you didn't believe me. Now you know, under Anna's suspicious gaze, I pretended to talk on the phone while quickly walking out of her room. As soon as I got out of the door, I took a sigh of relief. Life is hard, it all relies on acting skills. The next second, my phone rang again unexpectedly. Who is it this time? I looked down, and this time it really was my brother calling. George, did you badmouth me? As soon as I answered the call, my aggrieved brother started yelling. How did you find out? He replied. I just sneezed, it's definitely you, if you have nothing else, I'll hang up first, I just came out of Ana's room, and I'm feeling frustrated, just as I was about to hang up, he suddenly spoke out, there's also one more thing, Willow is back, she's looking for you, Willow is a girl I used to have feelings for, for years ago, my mom and uncle Sue reconstituted our family, and I moved into the Sue family's home, the Sue family and the Liu family have been associated for ages, and they have a very good relationship, often having meals together. Willow is the eldest daughter of the Liu family, gentle and elegant. I started to develop feelings for her after seeing her often. My feelings for her were quite obvious, that after she discovered them, she didn't reject me and accepted all the gifts I gave her. This made me mistakenly believe that she also liked me, until I saw her, with a nonchalant expression, explaining her relationship with me to others. He has no interest, we're just normal friends. I finally understood. She didn't like me. She just enjoyed being pursued. My affection for her was knit in the butt. Later, I voluntarily cut off contact with her. She didn't care, thinking that I would come running back to be a supplicant in a few days. As it turned out, she was thinking too much. Later, she went abroad to study and we lost all contact. She came back a few days ago and asked me about you. How you have been doing? My brother said. Oh, so what did you say? I said you're doing great. You have an online girlfriend who is a hundred times better than her. 
She was stumped for a while then she hung up. Hey ha ha ha. He was laughing like crazy on the other end of the call. He only knew that I was dating online and used my online girlfriend to piss off Willow. But he didn't know that my online girlfriend is Anna. And he certainly didn't know that we had broken up. Ding dong. The doorbell suddenly rang. There's a visitor at the door. I hung up the phone and went downstairs to open the door. As soon as I opened the door, what greeted me was a delicate and beautiful face. The person standing in front of me was wearing a pink dress, had a slender figure, and a faint smile on her lips. Long time no see, George. It was Willow. Speak of the devil, and he shall appear in the living room. Willow was sitting on the sofa, accepting the tea my mother had handed over. Smiling elegantly, I just returned to the country recently, and especially came to visit Uncle and Andy. My mother and uncle Sue didn't know about the previous affairs between Willow and me. In their hearts, Willow is an elegant, generous, learned and talented child from another family. They liked her no matter how they looked at her. They were enthusiastically making small talk, and I didn't want to join in. With an excuse, I was about to make my exit when a pair of small hands tugged at the corner of my clothes. Brother George, play with me. It was Willow's six-year-old younger brother, David. David always likes to follow his sister around. And this time when Willow came to my house, he insisted on coming too. What do you want to play? I asked him. Do you have Legos? I like to build with Legos. The little guy's eyes were sparkling. We don't have any. Then Dot, do you have a game console? Um, no. I responded truthfully. Ah, uh, how come there isn't anything fun? Never mind. I'll just play with the dog. He opened his arms and ran towards our dog, Little White, wanting to pat him. Woof woof woof. Little White barked three times, scaring him back. With children around five or six, even dogs seemed to disdain them. Suddenly, I remembered that I had a set of comic books in my room, which would be perfect for him to read. So I brought the little brat into my room. When I opened the cupboard, a set of children's comic books were neatly arranged inside. I took one out and handed it to him. What is this? It's so pretty. But his attention was drawn to something in the corner of the cupboard. It was a porcelain rabbit that Anna had given me. Ever since our breakup, I've kept it hidden in the cupboard, worrying that Anna might see it. I didn't answer the kid's question and close the cabinet. Just sit here and read quietly. Don't touch my things. Got it. And ma'am home. He pretended to be obedient and nodded, but his eyes couldn't help but glance at the cupboard. George, a gentle voice came. Looking back, I found Willow leaning against the door frame. I wasn't sure how long she had been standing there, can I talk to you for a bit? On the open balcony, Willow and I sat opposite each other. I heard you found someone online. She got straight to the point. What does it have to do with you? I responded coldly. Willow looked concerned. Online dating can be risky. You have never even seen her face. How do you know what kind of person she is? Be careful not to be taken advantage of. She cautioned. What if she's really ugly? Sorry, but she is incredibly beautiful. What if she's a pauper? She's rich enough to buy your life, all right? Instead of finding someone online, why don't you look at the people around you in real life? Maybe you could find someone better, she pointed at herself. Actually, I missed you every day when I was abroad. I was immature then and didn't appreciate you. If you could give me another chance, I don't want to. I interrupted her. Willow, I've moved on from the past. I don't like you. Please stop bothering me. After saying this, I got up and left. As soon as I turned a corner, I unexpectedly bumped into a wall of flesh. When I looked up, I met Anna's bright eyes. You were dating online. Anna looked at me, tilting her head slightly. H. Hout, how did she hear? Why are you eavesdropping? I was a bit guilty. Who's eavesdropping? Her voice was soft. I was standing here peacefully, admiring the view. You two were speaking so loudly. Those words intentionally entered my ears. It would have been difficult not to hear. Anna has a pair of beautiful peach blossom eyes. When she speaks, the corners of her eyes slightly tilt upwards, very captivating. She leaned in slightly, her tone of voice uncertain. Do you think it's a coincidence? We're both online dating. Yes, it's such a coincidence. Even more coincidental is that your online date is me. Isn't that surprising? She stared at me without interruption. Her gaze was not as polite and distant as before, but instead, it carried a hint of inquiry. She seemed to start doubting me, just when I didn't know how to deal with her gaze. Suddenly a heavenly voice saved me from the fire and water. Dinner time, 
My mother stood not far away, waving at us. I quickly made my exit. Anna watched my retreating figure, pursed her lips slightly, not knowing what she was thinking. As soon as I entered the house, Willow came to find me, looking anxious. George, where's my brother? Isn't he reading in my room? I asked. Willow replied, I just went to look for him, but he wasn't there. Dinner was temporarily put on hold, and everyone was looking for David. But after everyone searched high and low in the house for a long time, he was nowhere to be found. Where on earth did the kid go? I stood in the yard looking around, anxiously stamping my feet. Suddenly, there was a rustle of nose in the doghouse. A childish voice was grumbling, stupid dog, this carrot is fake. You're eating it even though it's fake. I hurriedly followed the sound. Turns out David had crawled into the doghouse and was in a struggle with Little White over something. Neither of them wanted to back down. David held on to the thing tightly, refusing to let go, and Little White bit onto the thing, refusing to let go, as for what they were fighting over. My heart broke when I saw clearly it was the porcelain rabbit and carrot that Anna had given me. David, you little rascal, I was furious and anxious. I told him not to touch my things, but he still did. Not only did he take it, but he also waved it around, even waving it in front of Little White. Carrots are Little White's favorite food. When he sees a carrot, he wants to bite it. And he's not very smart. He can't tell the difference between a real and a fake carrot. In this emergency, if they keep fighting, my porcelain is going to break. I must hurry and separate them. Just as I was about to take action, another hand reached into the doghouse before me and lifted David and Little White out. Anna held David in her left hand and Little White in her right. David, so you're here. Anna looked puzzled. What are you guys fighting over? You're so intense. I stood by, completely flustered. Why is she here? David hesitantly held up the porcelain rabbit and carrot to Anna. For this, after seeing the item, Anna was taken aback then her eyes couldn't hide her surprise. She was so delighted that she immediately took the porcelain into her hands, inspected it carefully, and confirmed that this was the gift she had given to her online boyfriend. Then she looked at David, anxious to question, who gave you this? I was incredibly anxious, giving David frantic looks. Don't say it, don't say it. I didn't dare to think about how awkward it would be for Anna and me once it was revealed. Facing Ana's intense gaze, David was scared. In front of Ana's powerful Laura, the kid didn't dare to lie, so he pointed at me. I got it from George's room. For a moment, the air seemed to stand still. Anna looked up at me. The waves in her eyes encompassed a thousand words. 14. At the dinner table, Anna was seated on my left, and Willow on my right. This was the most difficult meal I've ever had to endure. Willow gave me a bite of broccoli, her smile warm. George, this is delicious, eat more. Just as I was about to decline, I heard Anna humming coldly by my side. George. She looked towards Willow, her tone unkind. You are really making yourself feel at home, aren't you? Anna took the broccoli out of my bowl and put in a chopstick full of carrots. He doesn't like broccoli, he likes carrots, I was speechless. Then, Anna's throat gave out the sweetest voice that shocked me for 10,000 years. George. Carrots are delicious, eat more. Anna. That's enough. Everyone at the table was stunned by Ana's actions, all looking at me and her with faces of shock. With my face flushed, I buried my head and ate hurriedly. Late at night, I laid in bed thinking about what happened today, tossing and turning, unable to sleep. Ding dong. My phone suddenly received a message. Miss Bunny. If you're still awake, can you open the door? I'm outside your room. I hesitated and got out of bed, opening the door. Anna was standing at the doorway. She was wearing a white bathrobe, her figure slender, and her slightly curled hair dropped onto her shoulder. Seeing me open the door, she gave me a small smile. It seems I'm not the only one who can't sleep tonight. Her smile caused my heart to skip a beat. What do you want from me? I stared at her. Her gaze was burning, leaning slightly closer. I've been looking for this person for so long, I didn't expect him to be right beside me. I'm so stupid. I only realized it now. George, so much has happened during this time. Don't you have something you want to say to me? The silent night amplifies her voice, making it exceptionally clear. Worried about disturbing my mother and Uncle Sue, I quickly pulled her into my room. As soon as the door closed, I'm sorry, I apologize directly. I was avoiding you because I didn't know how to face these feelings. She spoke softly, 
You don't have to apologize. I've never blamed you. I know what you're worried about. Don't worry. Our relationship as the younger generation won't affect the relationship between the elders. No matter what obstacles lie ahead, we will face them together. Okay. I looked at her seriously, the girl standing in front of me with her slender figure, standing a head shorter than I do, seemed delicate, yet her words were resonant, giving a striking sense of security. She tilted her head up slightly, bait in the moonlight, and her eyes shone brightly. She looked at me quietly, waiting for my response. I don't know why, but at this moment, she reminds me of a little bunny, a cute, brave little bunny. Suddenly filled with courage, I firmly responded, okay upon hearing my words. She immediately laughed, lunging forward to hug me, I hugged her tightly in return. The girl in front of me had sparkling eyes, shining like the Big Dipper in the silent night, illuminating everything around us, and also lighting up my heart. I know that our identities as step-siblings will, more or less, pose obstacles for our relationship in the future. But I'm not scared, knowing that she loved me regardless of anything, I'm not afraid of anything. As long as we stand together resolutely, no obstacle is worth mentioning, I gently kissed her on the forehead. I love you, Bunny. We will definitely be happy.